church. Dear Jesus, thank you for this day. Thank you for giving us life, health, and strength, and moving over our heads, friends, and family, and our church. Lord, thank you for our church. Please help the speaker, speakers, and to have them do a good job. Lord, please help the sick, hungry, and the weary. Lord, please bless us and have a good church service and a sermon, a good sermon too. And please forgive us for our sins. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. amen.
It says, And King Nebuchadnezzar sent word to gather together the satraps, the administrators, the governors, the counselors, the treasurers, the judges, the magistrates, and all the officials of the provinces to come to the dedication of the image which King Nebuchadnezzar had set up. So not only did he make this humongous statue, now he wanted all the people to gather together and he wanted to dedicate it. So, um, as you read through this chapter, it continues that um, everybody comes together and they get a big orchestra, like all the music of um, all the instruments of the ancient world come together, big orchestra, and um, we have a person that tells them when the music plays, everyone needs to bow down to this statue. So, if you skip over to verse um, 7 of Daniel chapter 3, it says, so at that time, when all the people heard the sound of the horn, flute, harp, and lyre, in symphony with all kinds of music, all the people, nations, and languages fell down and worshipped the gold image which Nebuchadnezzar had set up. Except for three people, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And so, if you continue reading on, it says people noticed this, and they went and they told the king. So they decided to stand up for their faith, even when everybody else was bowing down. They decided to be the ones that would stand up and show that they would be true to God and show their faith. Do we ever have that where we have to stand up and um, where other people notice what we're doing is different because we're following God? Does that ever happen? Yeah. Okay. So... Um, we're going to skip down to uh, uh, verse 14 and through 18. So the people notice that they had stood up, and they go and they talk to King Nebuchadnezzar. And Nebuchadnezzar's like, what? People aren't bowing down to my image? He's like, okay, call them over here. I need to talk to them. So in verse 14 it says, Nebuchadnezzar spoke, saying to them, Is it true, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego? that you did not serve my gods or worship the gold image which I, which I have set up? Now, if you were ready at the time, you hear the sound of the horn, flute, harp, lyre, and psaltery, in symphony with all kinds of music, and you fall down and worship the image which I have made, good. But if you do not worship, you shall be cast immediately into the midst of the burning fiery furnace. And who is the God who will deliver you from my hands? So he talks to them, and he's like, you know, maybe you made a mistake. I'll give you one more chance, okay? When you hear the music, bow down, it's all good. But listen to what they say back to him in verse 16. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego answered and said to the king, O Nebuchadnezzar, we have no need to answer you in this matter. If that is the case, our God, whom we serve, is able to deliver us from the burning fiery furnace, and he will deliver us from your hand. Now listen to this. But if not, let it be known to you, O king, that we do not serve your gods, nor will we worship the gold image which you have set up. They are firm in their faith, whether they live or whether they die, to follow God. So, Nebuchadnezzar tried to give them a chance, and they tell him, hey, you know, it's not going to work. We're staying true to God. And then Nebuchadnezzar gets really mad and says, um, in, uh, Verse 19, he was full of fury. And so, he says, okay, guess what? I have furnaces over here. I'm going to um, heat them up um, even hotter, and I'm going to throw you in there, okay? So, he ties them up, he leaves all their clothes on, they're wearing all their clothes, and says um, they're wearing their coats, their trousers, their turbans, all this flammable stuff is all on them, and he throws them in. The people that throw him in even die because of the heat. So he's probably sitting there like, okay, they're gone. And then he looks over there, King Nebuchadnezzar, and he sees in that furnace, not only are there three people standing up, not only are they still alive, there's four of them. And he turns to his counselors and he's like, we threw three people in there, right? They're like, oh yes, yes, we threw three in. He says, I see four. And in verse 25, you can read, he says, Look, he answered, I see four men loose, walking in the midst of the fire, and they are not hurt, and the form of the fourth is like the Son of God. So 
that's interesting. He saw another person in there, and he knew that it was the Son of God. How did he know this? Was it because of Daniel and his three friends? We know that they had already told Nebuchadnezzar about God, and Nebuchadnezzar knew this. And because of their witness, he was able to see, hey, this is the Son of God. So, this really, this is really shocking to Nebuchadnezzar. And he goes over to the fiery furnace, and as it says in verse 26, he says, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, servants of the Most High God, come out and come here. And then they came out from the midst of the fire. And the satraps, administrators, governors, and the king's counselors gathered together. And they saw these men on whose bodies the fire had no power. The hair of their head was not singed, nor were their garments affected, and the smell of fire was not on them. Praise the Lord. Amen. This um, story has a remarkable similarity to um, a promise in the Bible in Isaiah. If you turn with me to Isaiah 43, 2. Um, it, sucked. it talks about this. <laughs> Isaiah 43, 2 says, When you pass through the waters, I will be with you, and through the rivers they shall not overflow you. When you walk through the fire, you shall not be burned, nor shall the flames scorch you. Amen. Isn't that amazing? This story is an exact representation of this Bible verse. But how does this apply to us? We have problems in life. Sometimes we have to stand up for God. Sometimes we have things where we need faith. Um, is this story telling us that whenever we have problems, whenever we have to stand up, we're always going to get out, uh, you know, totally scot-free, not burnt, are we always going to have good? Is there never going to be problems? That's not true. Um, bad things happen even to good people, even when you have faith. But I think the important lesson to learn from this is no matter what happened to them, God was with them. God was right there in that fiery furnace, in that thing that could have killed them, in their biggest problem at the moment. God was right there. And... Um, Today, I want you guys to know that God will go with you, too, through your fiery furnace. Amen. 